everyone, welcome back to the Citizen Channel. We're all staying safe and well. And part two, yes, check out part one if you've not watched part part one yet of uh, the boys of 11, 12, Jolie and Lescott, of course, we're going to have a look at. And we're going to look at part two. And we're going to go from January 2012. We got halfway through the season. Of course, the uh, 11 12 season, which all this this is all about, really, but it's all about uh, Julian Lescott as well, not not just the 11 12 glorious season, but about the squad, and that's what we're talking about. So let's let's go back to this now. Let's start with uh, City, yeah, knocked out of the FA Cup and seemingly on the way out of the Carling Cup with a home loss against Liverpool and a uh, away game, a tough away game to come on the 22nd of January 2012. Lescott scored a goal in the 3 2 win against Tottenham. Uh, he gave City a 2 0 lead at the time to help maintain a slim lead over United at the top of the Premier League. It went on to win that game 3 2. And on February 12th, he scored the only goal in another tight game, another tight game at Villa Park. Yeah, 1 0 win. A very, very nervy game, that one. Lescott was pushed out temporarily, though, in March with Colo Torre, obviously now. Fully recovered from his drug ban that he'd had the season before taking his spot. And United did get the noses in front. Yeah, we'd done, you know, we'd been in charge for most of the time, but United had managed to get the noses back in front. But with company and Lescott, the centre back pairing for the last seven league games, uh, all looked lost after a defeat against Arsenal. But victory then in the last six games landed Lescott and, of course, City the long awaited 11 12 title or the title that, that, that mattered. King of the Kipax, issue 198. Tom Parrish talks about uh, Lescott's season. He goes on to say this 11-12 season. Patience, patience has finally paid off. And after Colo's ban, Lescott and Vincent Company are now arguably the best defensive pair in the league. Struggles a bit more when Kolarov plays to his left, don't we? didn't we all? Uh, and looks far worse than partnering Savage. A shaky start to the European campaign, but has massively reduced his hoofs into touch and has been our key centre back on many occasions when Vincent Comney's needed a bit of a rest. Made the hassle of a pissed off golem worthwhile and has stayed fit and focused for almost the whole season. Hope he does well in Euro 2012. Terry doesn't deserve a chance. So that's John Terry, of course. Yeah, so that was possibly yeah he had he had a good uh, a good review the season before and this was probably equally as good so he's there isn't he this is probably probably at his peak now <laughs> his stats for that season eleven and twelve he made thirty starts in the league one as sub scored two goals made nine starts in the cups one as sub and no goals so on to twelve thirteen where we started to get a bit iffy didn't it another header scored in a home one one draw with Arsenal on the twenty third of September. Um, was part of a stuttering start, really, in the league for City. And this was interrupted in November by a not serious injury, but a bit of a niggly back injury for uh, uh, Julian Lescott. A City hover just outside the top six. Yeah, we hadn't started too well in uh, to defend our title. He also had a, a sort of more competition at the, at the centre-back spot as well in the form of a guy who would go on to play most of the games that season as centre-half. Uh, it's the Serbian Nastasic, of course, and was spending as much time on the bench as playing as the season progressed. City were playing lots of games, though, so he was getting a reasonable amount of game time. As United began to pull away in the league and the FA Cup remained the only prize left for City, uh, Lescott was again struggling to get a starting spot. He was a late substitute in the semi-final win at Wembley over Chelsea and he was also, sadly for him, an unused substitute as City were beaten, or sadly or gladly for him actually, uh, an unused substitute as we were beaten 1-0 by Wigan Athletic uh, in the 2013 FA Cup final on the 11th of May. Going on to the King of the Kipax, this is King of the Kipax 207. Uh, John Burfield uh, summed up uh, Joe Lowe's, he called him, Joe Lowe, Joe Lowe's season. My feelings on Joe Leska are well documented. Yeah, in part one, he hadn't been overly impressed the early doors with, uh, with Joe Leska. I think he's good for team morale, is another excellent ambassador for the club, and furthermore, he handles his demotion to the bench for much of the season superbly. When called upon, he was generally solid and dependable, but the Achilles heel, and it's a sizeable one, is the likelihood of disaster ensuing whenever he's just put under pressure by decent opponents. 
in such circumstances on the away fixture in the Amsterdam Arima was probably at the lowest point. Uh, that was the Ajax game, wasn't it? Lescott's horrendous lack of pace and laboured touch leaves us caught in imminent disaster, like King Harold turning up at Hastings without his helmet and a target painted on his face. Given the homegrown quota required, and unless someone significantly better becomes available, I'd be inclined to keep Jolo on for one more season, although, again, only in a supporting role. So, yeah, he did say stay in brackets and it, it was quite right but again uh, interestingly enough um, it would probably come to fruition what he was saying in there his stats for the 12-13 season in, in a uh, fairly disappointing season for City let's be honest about it uh, league starts 17 9 he came on a, 9 times a substitute score 1 goal in the Cups only 6 starts and 1 a substitute then, of course, Mancini was out of the door and uh, Lescott would play for his uh, one, two, third manager now, isn't it? He obviously hews onto Mancini and now, obviously, he would play under Manuel Pellegrini for this 13 14 season. Sadly, uh, yeah, it wasn't going to be great. To make things worse, the end of October saw the arrival of yet another centre back. Uh, we're trying to find that marvellous, you know pairing up, aren't we? The, the, comp- the company Lescott pairing of a couple of seasons before seems to be sort of in the dim and distant past now. And, of course, Martin Demichelis came into the equation that season as well, about October about October time. And the most games Lescott will actually start in a row will be the very first three games of the season. After that, he never played more than two games in a row. And he will be an unused sub as many as 30 times. He was on the sub bench 30 times. I mean, I think back to Pantillimon, who literally could go a full season as an unused sub on the bench. But uh, yeah, 30, that's a hell of a lot. He'd go on to start to get a start in the Capital One Cup all the way. Yeah, this he was unlucky again with this, but then was an unused sub in the final with the win against Sunderland. Uh, obviously, he gets a medal because obviously he played in all the rounds and he was part of the squad. And but he started all the cup games as well, FA Cup games, up until we'd lost that quarter final against Yes Wigan, but. Uh, uh, we'd lost that, so we, but he started all those, so he started all those games. But he would only get sporadic starts in the Champions League, where we only only got as far as a round of 16 uh, and featured in our last game in a 2-0 home loss to Barcelona. It'd be an image up of him and, him and Messi. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a match-up. We lost that 1-4-1 on aggregate. Lescott was reportedly offered the chance to leave City with clubs such as West Ham. Uh, probably West Brom was probably in, the, in there somewhere as well. And perhaps Wolves again, who was hinted at a couple of seasons before, um, being linked to prospective destinations. And allegedly they agreed a fee with West Ham at one point. However, Lescott turned this down because he, he could see we were still in a chance of a couple of trophies. Still had a good chance at that time we still had a good chance in the League Cup, which we went on to win of course. Uh, and he could see we still had a chance in the in the league. Uh which uh, so he wanted to stay and see it out and see if we get another couple of pots and why not? That's what he came to City for. His actual final game at the Etihad was a 5-0 win against Fulham on the 22nd of March. And the City came from well behind to win the title that season, as we know, under Pellegrini. He sat out the last 10 league games as an unused substitute. In Concannon's class of 2013-14, in King of the Kipak's issue 216, he summed up what would be, of course, uh, Jolian's last season with us. I was pretty sure that Jolian was our best bet as a left-sided centre-half, but as the season wore on, it became clear he was no longer the player he once was. He never got the chances either, did he? Uh, when he's on form, he's everything that a defender should be. He gets in tackles, he commands in the air, and it was always he and Vincent Company clearly trusted most alongside him. The problem is that his lack of pace exposes him an awful lot when faced with a strong pacey striker. For all of his great 90 minutes, you are never quite sure whether the next game will get him shown up for being a little better than average. He's been a great servant for City, but those days are coming to an end. And then the Ed's notes at the, at the end of this. I'm afraid Jolie's off to pass his new this summer, but it's been a great move for both he and the club. We wish him well, we certainly do. And his stats for that 13-14 season, just eight starts in the league, two as substitute, no goals, and 13 starts in the Cups, one as substitute, no goals. Within two weeks of the end of the title winning season, well, double, wasn't it, of the season on the 24th of May 2014, Lescott was released by City and did go on to join West Brom. 
He spent five seasons with us, winning two league titles, an FA Cup and a League Cup. And we thank him so much, of course we do, for being part of a, winning us that FA Cup after so long, after that 35-year wait for a trophy. And being, of course, the title of this, the boys of 11-12, part of that historic 11-12 title winning squad, a very important part of those two years as well. Though he didn't feature much in the double winning season of 2013-14. It was a fitting end, I think, that he stuck around. He probably would have, he would have got the medals anyway, even if he'd left in February and March. He would have still got the trophies, of course. But the fact he stayed there to enjoy it with the rest of the team uh, speaks volumes, I think, for the sort of guy he was. And he thoroughly deserved that second title and the League Cup with his medal as well. Uh, for the loyalty he's he shown City throughout, I say he never never announced a trouble off the pitch. From what I remember, I couldn't see anything or find anything. And uh, he was always a, a good ambassador for the club. And what it was that he was able to make, he was one of those players that when we first got him around that nine ten uh, years, uh, he was able to help us move on to that other level, wasn't he? Go on to another level. Always committed, always a pleasure to watch. Uh, and we support him over his, obviously we also I think he got great support at City uh, he remains a popular media pundit of course even now and he's always uh, banging the drum for City as well so it's great uh, it's just a pleasure pleasure to watch him and I'm glad he managed to have some success and win some trophies which is what he joined City to do uh, that's fantastic and it's still great to see him in and around the club now let me know your memories guys and let me know your thoughts on Jolien Lescott one of our boys of 11-12. Thanks for watching. Please, until we meet again, stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Bye for now.